So compared to then business model canvas is that instead of having this uh, deep, long, uh, descriptive content uh, on topics, uh, one on top of the other, uh, with what makes it very difficult to iterate in the business plan, in the business model canvas or canvases in general, the whole point is that you can visualize everything and you only record like bullet point level of information. What it means is that it works for a small team. It works when everyone is working in the same space or at least in, in, in working remotely in the same kind of uh, uh, time space. So not something that you work on and then you pass it on to the team two weeks later and say everything is in the in the in the canvas because it's hard to read those bullet points and understand them in, in, in detail if not being part of actually the work being iterated and memorizing a lot of those things that is then only recorded at bullet point level. <clears throat> but when working with this uh, with this canvas approach, what it helps to create is that it's more easier to change and revamp the whole business business model and any components and then when you change something you see okay now we also need to change the topics here we change need to remove these bullet points here and so forth so it gives you a much faster iteration cycle for the whole business model um, altogether but and because the information is then recorded and documented at very uh, tiny small uh, bullet point type of levels but it requires people to re to memorize and know what those bits of those bullet points means uh, in context. And as a visual tool, everything on one page, you can see really these topics and, and, and work in that way. So that's why uh, the business model canvas is really uh, uh, the most effective tool to for this development phase. Uh, to, be, be, to be worked along the way with the product side, the MVP product, and doing the validations, which we look at some of the tools also. So basically then Canvas as a validation, then it helps you to, to, to look at some of the, some of the things in, in, in a lighter detail and some of the things in, in with a little bit more detail, but still not at the level that, that you would uh, write and document and go way too far in making assumptions uh, at this phase you, if you would use a bis business plan as a tool and you would not definitely iterate a long document uh, all the text inside there when you decide that oh we need to remove that point and then write the whole thing open because you also don't have a need because there isn't so many people that you would have to communicate the whole business in such level of detail other than yourself, or if you would be looking for funding. But that's why investors who understand startups, they would never ask you to do a business model at this phase, a, a business plan at this phase that is full of assumptions because they know it's not real. Uh, but whereas uh, some who is not so experienced with startups would actually ask you to do a business plan that is based on assumptions that doesn't make any sense and they would actually think it's real and, and you can understand how many big problems that can create. So I recommend none of you to do it that way and don't definitely don't go applying for business loan type of money, putting your own, own assets in line, believing yourself in something that is not true and not validated um, because you create a big problem and a financial issue for yourself and, and all the founders. If you do, if you do that approach, stay humble and stay committed to finding the fun, the validations first, and and getting things to the point where you have something that you can actually base your business on top of. So then the options is of course grant funding, uh, where where it doesn't really matter if if they request a business plan if that's their process. Um, but at the same time, the money is such that if you fail, you are not owing any, anyone anything because that's the function of that type of money. But uh, I would rather always focus on, on customer-based money when, when possible. But it's not always possible and it's not always the best 
scenario either. And that's why you need also not only this type of generic knowledge, but then your business specific knowledge. So seek mentoring locally, seek advisors locally, have a discussion with them, but with those who actually understand uh, startups and, and these types of issues. But once you have then um, the, the enough of the, the iterations and validations done, then you can of course also start to move that content more in the traditional business plan format. And the reality is that you need to have that and you should have that because then the whole business model should not anymore change so rapidly. So now if it's every six months or even once a quarter, uh, then maybe that is a good time to actually take the whole document and update and rewrite it as often as needed. But you need a longer format to be able to communicate to more people in a more understandable way. Or the other option is that, that uh, you do a presentation out of your business model canvas and you make a recording out of that, but it's not a common format, so you can't really be sending videos and expect people to watch videos uh, in their process when they are ap applicable. Um, but these, these, these are the, the rationale behind. <clears throat> so if we compare the business model canvas with, with another known uh, lean canvas, uh, approach. So Lean Canvas is, is a modification or a, a, a totally new version. It's not like a, 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 a newer version of the same tool. It's a different version modification from uh, the original business model Canvas. Uh, um, and that has taken a little bit of different approach, but at the same time, in context of business model Canvas, uh, they have developed later on uh, it's been out for already for, for some time, but they developed additional canvas as a sub-tool to accommodate these parts that the Lean Canvas uh, basically worked uh, to iterate uh, a little bit more product focus and um, a little so narrowing the focus while business model looks, the whole business model and product and many things as much as possible. It's quite understandable from the world that converting business plan into business model canvas and then someone goes and does lead canvas to make it even leaner but at the same time the lead canvas world has developed further to then start to include additional elements so it has started to include those elements that it initially reduced but then creating a different canvas and different formats so these are both very good and useful tools uh, i have no preference which works better in general, it's which one you, which strategies of, or, or approaches you get more comfortable with or, or, or you, you resonate better, better with you. The, what the background is that the other one started more from the whole business and the other one starts more from the product focus uh, perspective. But at the end of the day, they, both of these resources have additional tools uh, to, go, to go deeper as well. So if we look at the Lean, uh, lean canvas um, compared to the business model canvas. It basically, this is the key changes that uh, are, have made uh, different with, with that approach, at least in their uh, original format until uh, developing it further. So to use these tools, let's look at the Anyway, the, 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 the more popular and more comprehensive um, and more known business model canvas uh, in, in, in a bit more detail of what's in those boxes. Uh, first, from the business model, why we're not looking at this at the moment, as mentioned, is, is we need to do more of the validations of several things before they start to carry enough value to be written open in more extensive way and it's also a document that is mainly needed for extending the team adding more team members having everyone same understanding is good way to reading the business plan if it's properly structured but it, it should not be based on on 
things, it should already include all of the learnings as uh, validations as a base. So we'll get more into this also uh, in the next module when it becomes about scaling your business. <clears throat> so that's when, when this also comes more relevant. So for now, we'll, we'll go through the business model canvas and look at some of these different aspects that um, what's in, in the canvas and, and basically how to work with work with this in general. So the key really is to, to be able to visualize the whole thing and, and the text here, is, it doesn't need to be visible. It's just showing what text is there uh, as, as instructions. So we'll go those separately slide by slide. Um, but if this would be your own canvas, it would be blank and you could, you could start putting, putting uh, uh, bullet points there and seeing your whole business. In, in a more holistic perspective. And the additional extension, which is actually a better starting point, and that is kind of uh, helping uh, or, or then kind of replacing the, the changes that Lean Canvas originally did to help um, bring more focus into this product uh, market fit perspective, uh, and not only uh, the, the whole business model market fit uh, is, then, is then this uh, additional canvas. So let's also look at that a little bit. So, so as we work through um, the different uh, fits, so if we start in the, mod, in the module one, we start with finding the, 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 the problem solution fit level. So that's just getting the sense of, of, of the idea, ideation level fits. And it's also the, the idea and the team fit. So making sure that there's an aligned vision and mission between all the team members who are joining. So that is the beginning part. Then the next level, we get to the product market fit. And this is a, this is a very crucial part of, of validating that there is actually value being created. Uh, and then we move to the level that is entire business model, not only the product, but how it makes money, uh, business model, market fit. So now we are focusing on the, the product market fit level, moving from just pure problem solution fit to the product market fit. And so we now dive, take a deep dive. Actually, this is the, the deep dive into the mission. To whom we are creating what value? And, and this is the, the value proposition canvas purpose. So this is a, the tool to really help identify the customer's needs. And here the, the terminology used is customer jobs. And this is familiar and the same uh, from the strategies uh, uh, material, um, working and prioritizing ideas. It, takes a deep time on the strategies of the, the customer jobs already. So if that exercise is already done, then you can directly also uh, use it here uh, with this canvas as well. So starting from customer jobs, customer needs, <clears throat> and then going through each of these, these elements uh, forward. So the value side <clears throat> basically looks the value proposition uh, describes the features of a specific value proposition in the business model in a structured and detailed way. And in the beginning, the whole point again, like any Canvas tool, the point is that you can start with bullet points and you can keep iterating and, and changing and prioritizing the order of those bullet points as you do go through the different uh, variations or versions. Um, and most importantly, then validations with, with the actual customers um, through different tools and dialogues that we'll, we'll also look a little bit more. So this is first to start with the first product or first service and even the very first feature or features or core feature of the product or service, uh, depending on, on what that is and building the minimum uh, version out of that to be able to validate that. And as we discussed uh, earlier about the MVP, building it doesn't mean coding it. It can be, you know, you do the mock-up screens, you do the, 
the invasive clickable demo of just pictures that have hot buttons that you can that make changing of the screen or if it's a, some other type of product if it's a physical product maybe you can 3d print it maybe you can build a first person manually uh, if it's if it's uh, or you can you can get some other kind of way to test that uh, that's a big part of your skill set is how creative can you be in creating the user experience for customer to be able to validate it but starting with products and services then the game creators describe how the product and service actually create customer gains how do they benefit from this so what are the benefits in practice and how do how are those actually created so this gain is a type of uh, value and then the pain relievers is, is how does the product or service alleviate customer pain? So how does it take a problem away? So that's another perspective into value. Either it removes a pain or it brings them some additional value or it does both. But the, this is the point to list them and to visualize them and to really see them uh, at the same time. And not only that, then the other side of this this matching process and validation process is of course then the customer profile where you identify the type of customer, you put a, a persona name or a type or however you define the customer category or group or segment and, and then basically describe uh, this in more detail and then starting to break that down into the customer jobs that describe what the customers are trying to get done in their work or in their lives. So this can be as simple as they want to look better, so they, or they want they are bored, or, or they want entertainment, or, or they actually have a business problem, or they, they, they are not uh, enjoying how certain product or feature works currently, whatever that may be, or they need to do something better, faster, more reliably, get access to that cheaper, um, whatever that may be. But first you have to define what that thing is. So it's like, where does the, the this thing that wants to be improved, where does it occur? How does the customer's job start, what they're trying to do? If they're trying to reduce the board, being bored, where does it start when they are not, not bored anymore? Like, what is that process like? And, and then really looking at how to make that better and what are the current ways, how they are doing that. And then basically the gains is then what are the gains that the, the, the outcomes that customer actually wants to, uh, wants to achieve. So what is the thing that they want to say that, okay, now I got it, I, 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 I went through it and this is, this is the outcome. And then also the pains. So what are the pains? They're suffering with bad user experience or they're suffering from the too high cost or they're suffering from uh, not having access to something that is only for, for limited audiences or whatever that may be. But what is the pain that they're suffering when they are trying to get uh, basically accommodate their need uh, or in the other terminology, get the job done, what they're trying to accomplish. And now when we look at the canvas as a whole, then it means that there's a fit that we have identified and validated uh, the customer segment. We have identified and validated what they're trying to accomplish. We have identified and validated the gains that they're expecting. We have identified and validated the pains that they're suffering. And we have done enough of that, that we have a, 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 a scalable group of this audience that we can start catering for with actual product. And on the other side, we have identified what that product needs to be, what it's called, what is its name, uh, how does it look like, how does the customer experience the product, and that how do we deliver those gains, uh, gains that the customer is expecting and how do we deliver those pain relievers that the customer is expecting to go away. And the product doesn't need to include all of these things, but it definitely needs to include uh, either part. So either it needs to 
remove pains or it needs to uh, bring gains or if it does both great and of course over time this is something that you develop with more features or with the next product version uh, and so forth but you need to find the the, um, the the starting point but this is the tool how you can find more and more features and you can do as many um, variations or versions so you can do a pile of these canvases if you like and then start to look at how to prioritize them but this is of course not the exercise that you will then execute on everything you can you can use the exercise uh, to learn and get new perspectives and new ideas but then it's a separate process of how and what kind of MVP you actually uh, execute with customers because you need to get the authentic validation it's not this is still a level where you can do many different exercises including using the MVP but then the further you go from MVP to actual real working functional product then 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 the more you have to start committing to executing uh, on that product at the product level and real customer service level as well so then when we look at the whole canvas um, these value propositions is that one column uh, in the canvas where then you move um, move from this uh, other canvas you move the key things when you want to look at the whole business not only um, the, the product side and the product market fit side then you look at the whole canvas how does the product market fit uh, that we have identified or we have already validated that um, at a minimum viable product approach level then how does that look at in the whole business context so this is one one column and the types of things but but kind of summarizing uh, these points into that business model canvas level and then looking at uh, the other part is key partners so so now looking at that product and that value proposition uh, and that product market fit um, again you have to always remind be reminded yourself whether what things are validated what are not and which version of, of, of things as, as are you working are we working with ideation version now we're we working with validated version but anyway you have to look at then the bigger segment that everything is connected with each other so now from that perspective you look at the key partners and you can start listing those um, if not specific named partners but then the types of partners so so if the product is uh, is is uh, or the, the, the value then the delivery is known now then you can see who can help get that um, out to the to markets what are the channel partners or what are the supplier partners or uh, credibility partners or whichever those may be that that will that can help in your business and then also the motivators for these partnerships why would they want to partner with you what would be their benefits and, and opportunities and same for yourself of, of what does the partnership bring for you what is the benefit and motivator for you to seek the partnerships the key activities now this starts to be then uh, the, the things that you actually have to execute uh, so this is the, also the beginning part of your uh, things that you will later uh, document as processes but initially what are the key activities and this at this point they are the bullet point level versions um, uh, how do you service, service the customer how do you get things to customers how do you manage the dialogues uh, customer relationships uh, payment systems revenues and so forth and you need to work this through uh, considerations at least from product perspective problem solving perspective um, and uh, platforms, networks and, and so forth. Depending on, again, like what type of business model you are looking to execute. And we, on the, on the, on the, on the previous module focusing on the, on the 
formation phase, we covered also a lot of these kind of bigger level uh, strategies in regards of whether you're doing an online service or whether you are looking to build business out of uh, existing data or if you're looking to do a platform economy approach, a platform business, two-sided marketplace um, and so forth. So these are the, the, also the ways of how do you kind of uh, build the, 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 the strategy or the approach in the context of uh, business model as well. <clears throat> Customer relationships is, is then of course how do you handle what are the, the relationships like? Is it like in-person service, online service? Uh, is, it a, is it a true retailer type of products? Uh, is it true partners and so forth? Um, but basically it's also like how does that customer relationship uh, live? What is the experience at customer relationship level for the customers? So what type of expectations we create? How do we how do we cater for those expectations? And this, again, because this is the whole business level and not only about the product level, so it includes uh, different types of levels. So then the next part is the customer segments, and, and this is the, the, I would say, the sub-segment of uh, the mission. In the mission, you should be, it, it should be clear uh, the kind of the main main segment or main industry or category and, and then uh, in, the, in, in the business model you go and sub-segment them further. So for example in the context of Startup Commons we are catering for startup ecosystem development. Uh, so it's all the actors in the context of start startup ecosystems but then the segments that we have narrowed down more are the business creators aka those who actually develop the business or are with the business longer time and then the service providers or support providers those who provide support public and private actors and we have ecosystem developers and then we even have the, the uh, financiers of all of these activities so those are the, uh, the sub segments and inside there are individual entrepreneurs startups entrepreneurs accelerators incubators and so forth but, but um, this is just an example of segmentation further along. So a mission can still include a big, big market, but it's still reducing that it's in, in the context of startup commerce, it's still focused only on, on activities related to startup ecosystems. So some examples here, mass market, niche market, segmented, diversified, multi-sided platforms. So here also is a link to, to the type of uh, segmentation of, but these are just a quick snapshot. They can be many, many different and this should come naturally from the thought process going through from the product, mission, mission and so forth. The key resources, so of course this in the beginning it's your own team and the way of how you are developing the team, how you are building up the organization and extended uh, resources. But after that, then it, it's a different thing. How much of that organization will be internal and what activities does it focus on uh, and how much that, for example, if it's a platform business model, how much is it about orchestrating other assets and resources on one side and catering those for for those who are looking at those types of resource needs. So whether it's a traditional uh, linear business model from design to manufacturing to distribution to, to the end customers or whether it's more open two-sided platform uh, approach or any, any other combination. And looking at this from the types of resources, of course, physical, people, uh, uh, people, spaces, softwares, things like that, intellectuals, so these are the IPRs, key in the shareholder agreement uh, to be covered. Um, yeah, we have human resources further beyond uh, the founding team, uh, financial and, and so forth. So, but don't have, don't have to go extensively some more to help 
you in your own thought process of getting those first bullet points in each of the columns uh, of the business model canvas. <clears throat> and then channels is what type of all the channels. So the, this can be through the partnerships partly, but then also the, the, the direct channels or the platform channels that are available to you. So whether that's retailers, re, uh, representatives, platforms, um, sales channels, uh, networks, connections, and so forth. And again, everything starts from writing, you know, maybe first three bullet points in each of the columns and then starting to look at the holistic picture. Uh, and then also considering these uh, channels at different phases level. So how do we build awareness? How, where does the customer experience or does their evaluation, uh, how do they purchase or where does the purchasing happen? How do we deliver to what channels do we deliver? And then after sales, how do we handle the, the, the customer um, requests, needs, returns, problems, challenges, support, and, and so forth. So also considering uh, the channels and also channel partners in the context of, of these different phases of the product. So it, it may be that there's different actors, different partners, and now if you compare like the, the traditional business linear uh, pipeline type of business delivery, and specifically with physical products, and then if you think of uh, platform business model, you can put all of these uh, assets into the platform, uh, multi-dimensional um, uh, resource orchestration exercise, which is very challenging, very difficult to get done, and needs to be assisted with many manual ways and even doing many, many parts yourself. Uh, but, but anyway, that, that is also the then, then ultimately when that starts to work uh, over time and through many, many challenging steps, uh, then ultimately that's what, what the platforms are the ultimate uh, uh, models that are dominating at, at least uh, the digital landscape these days. Being that Amazon, being that Facebook, being that Google there or Apple, they are all platform, running by platform business models. <clears throat> So, cost structure, uh, the key part of looking at what does all of this cost, so whatever items we put there, and now we have the cost structure, what does it cost, time and money, or other resources, and, and then prioritizing those uh, based on, on, on any dimension, what are the most expensive one, um, what, what is the most uh, efficient one, or uh, what is what delivers uh, best return for whatever the expense is uh, in, in the context of, of what we're doing. And then also uh, cost structure in more detail is the business model more cost driven, value driven, and then some of the sample characteristics to help uh, build this cost structure a box with, uh, with the initial bullet points in place. And then on the other side is of course revenue streams is basically looking at how do we how does that value that we're delivering to customers, how does that convert into a revenue directly or indirectly? So direct is of course where customer just pays and indirect is that someone else pays and delivers that free for the actual user who experienced the value. So in context of online, this is of course the typical advertising case, free use of Facebook, we give our data and basically are naked online after that and then they use that data to cater us ads and other stuff and that's the trade-off we, we as Facebook users if we are there and when we are there that's what we accept uh, or don't accept and don't be there but that's the indirect business model and it's actually a lot of the there's a certain trend and momentum online happening at the moment where uh, more and more people are also wanting and more willing to actually work with more 
direct business model because then they don't have to think about what is the hidden agenda here, what happens. They can more comfortably think that now when I pay, I pay and they serve me and that's it, that's the business model. But unfortunately, even that is not often true. Oftentimes you pay and are still catered at and still your data is used. But that's a different different thing than, than capturing the value. Uh, um, in, in, in how do you do that? You can do indirect, direct, or you, both, you can do both. <clears throat> and then comparing that to kind of competitors um, and what do they currently pay, what are the levels and, and matching with these to find your own, own levels and also having a roadmap, for example, or variations of, of the revenue stream approaches. And we can look at this um, fixed pricing, dynamic pricing, asset sales, usage fees, subscription fees. So these are all here to just help give you the thought process so that you don't have to do these exercises on your own and be Googling what is relevant, but giving a good snapshot to build the first bullet points in this column as well. And, and have enough considerations like, okay, how would an asset sale with fixed pricing look with our product? Or how would a licensing model with dynamic pricing look with our product? And so forth. So that's for the business model model canvas. And if we just quickly look back into the uh, business model itself. So now if you have uh, put the, the, the bullet points in each of the columns, now you have, let's say you have three to five points in each of these columns through this exercise. Now you can really look at them, cross match them and seeing does this whole thing make sense? Like if we are doing this, if we, that do we, have we now considered the right key partners in context of, of, of uh, customer relationship or channels? Are we really seeing the key resources that we have to acquire everything ourselves? Or can we get also those at least initially through partners? Or do we start with ours first and then we later extend with partners and, and so forth? So this really helps now you to, to move. And now you can imagine that if you would have written all of those into a business plan, how difficult it, did, it would be to start reorganizing, re-evaluating, creating versions and, and uh, recording your learnings and validations when you work with uh, the MVP and you learn with the customers and you learn from the customers out of any aspect of the whole business model, then how difficult it is to even mentally go and pull out that business plan and start updating that and nobody actually then reads it because nobody wants to update it constantly and nobody wants to read it constantly. But Again, the limitation then comes the opposite, that business model of canvas when it's only bullet points, it doesn't necessarily make sense to those people who haven't internalized all those items, what they actually mean. <clears throat> 